to check for mediastinal shift, the apex beat is palpated and if it is displaced, then common causes of mediastinal displacement occur due to collapse of the lung, pleural effusion or scoliosis of the spine. To assess chest expansion, place the palms of the hands symmetrically on either side of the chest wall with the thumbs pointing towards the midline. Ask the patient, could you please take a deep breath in and out and feel whether the fingers move apart symmetrically. The thumbs should be separated by at least five centimetres. An additional test which may be performed during palpation is tactile vocal fremitus. Fremitus refers to the palpable vibrations that are transmitted through the lungs to the chest wall when the patient speaks. It is best detected using the ulnar border of the hand. Fremitus should be felt for in three different parts of the chest wall on each side. Ask the patient, would you mind saying 111 for me? And compare the right and left sides at each step using the two hands together to compare each side simultaneously. Tactile vocal fremitus is affected by conditions in the same way as breath sounds are, therefore you should expect vesicular breathing over areas of normal tactile vocal fremitus, decreased breath sounds over areas of decreased tactile vocal fremitus, and bronchial breathing over areas of increased tactile vocal fremitus. However, this set test is not very sensitive. Before beginning to percuss the chest wall, it is polite to explain to the patient what you are about to do. Percuss in the supraclavicular fossa over the lung apices, the clavicles, and between three to four areas on either side of the lung on the anterior as aspect. Do not forget to listen into the axilla area. You should expect dullness over the liver and the heart. In emphysema, the liver may be pushed down by the hyperinflated lung and the area of cardiac dullness may be lost. Do not forget to percuss the axilla and lateral aspects of the chest as previously mentioned. The following percussion notes may occur. The percussion note is resonant over normal lung. It is dull over consolidated lung, over collapsed lung. It is stony dull over a pleural effusion. The percussion note is hyperresonant this can be generalised when it signifies lung hyperinflation or localised when the cause may be a pneumothorax or a large emphysematous bulla. When auscultating, auscultate the front of the chest in the same places that you have percussed it. It is customary to use the bell of the stethoscope. You should start high in the apices and you should remember to listen in the axillae. Ask the patient, I would like to listen to your chest. Could you please take some deep breaths in and out through your mouth? Compare corresponding points on opposite sides of the chest. When auscultating, you are listening for both the breath sounds and for added sounds, listening for the following. Vesicular breath sounds, decreased breath sounds, bronchial breath sounds and added sounds. Vesicular breath sounds are heard over normal lung. There is no gap between the inspiratory and expiratory parts and the expiratory part is shorter. Bronchial breath sounds are high pitched in quality with a hollow or blowing sound, similar to that heard over the trachea and larynx during normal breathing. The breath sounds are of similar length and intensity in inspiration and expiration with a characteristic pause between the two phases. The quality of bronchial breath sounds is harsher than vesicular breathing. The most common cause of bronchial breathing is pneumonia. Other less common causes include the top of a pleural effusion. Decreased breath sounds are due to either reduced conduction or reduced airflow. The causes are listed on the slide. Crackles or crepitations are non-musical intermittent sounds created when alveoli and small airways open or close during respiration. Note when the crackles occur within the respiratory cycle. Early inspiratory crackles suggest small airways disease and can occur in bronchiolitis. 
In pulmonary edema, crackles occur in mid-inspiration. Fine late inspiratory crackles, which sound similar to rubbing hair between your fingers, are characteristic of pulmonary fibrosis. Bronchiectasis causes crackles throughout inspiration and expiration. Wheezes have a musical quality and imply airway narrowing and should be timed in relation to the respiratory cycle. Wheeze tends to be louder on expiration because airways normally dilate during inspiration and narrow on expiration. Wheezes usually occur in expiration and indicate narrowing of an airway. The smaller the airway, the higher the pitch of the wheeze. A high-pitched polyphonic wheeze occurs in asthma and COPD, but is a poor guide to the severity of airflow obstruction. In severe airways obstruction, wheeze may be absent because of reduced airflow, producing a silent chest. A plural rub is a creaking sound similar to that produced by bending stiff leather or treading on fresh snow. It is produced when inflamed parietal and visceral pleurae move over one another. It is best heard with a stethoscope diaphragm. It may be heard only on deep breathing at the end of inspiration and the beginning of expiration. A plural rub is usually associated with pleuritic pain and may be heard over areas of inflamed pleura in pulmonary infarction, pneumonia or vasculitis. When examining for vocal resonance, ask the patient to say 111 while you auscultate to assess the quality and amplitude of vocal resonance. Place the stethoscope in all the areas you auscultated previously and listen to see whether vocal resonance is normal, decreased or increased. Vocal resonance is the speaking equivalent of the breath sounds and can be used to confirm what you suspected on auscultation. Therefore, you should expect normal vocal resonance over areas of vesicular breathing, decreased vocal resonance over areas of decreased breath sounds, such as over a pleural effusion or an area of collapse, increased vocal resonance over an area of consolidated lung. Whispering petriloquy is the increased quality and loudness of whispers that are heard with a stethoscope over an area of lung consolidation. This is demonstrated by asking the patient to whisper 111 and listen over the chest wall as in normal auscultation. Now ask the patient to sit forward so you can examine their back. It may be helpful to ask them to sit with their arms crossed and their hands resting on the opposite shoulder as this will help move the scapulae partly out of the way and increase your access to the lung fields. Now look at the shape of the chest posteriorly and look at the chest wall for surgical scars, chest drains and radiotherapy tattoos. Check for intercostal recession and whether the movement of the chest is symmetrical. Assess chest expansion at two levels on the back of the chest. Assess chest expansion by placing the palms of the hands symmetrically on either side of the chest wall with the thumbs pointing towards the midline. Ask the patient, could you please take deep breaths in and out and feel whether the fingers move apart symmetrically. The thumbs should separate by at least 5 centimetres. An additional test which may be performed here but is not essential is a test for tactile vocal fremitus. Fremitus should be felt for in four different areas as seen in the picture on the posterior chest wall. Ask the patient, would you mind saying 111 for me and compare the right and left sides at each step using the two hands together. Tactile vocal fremitus is affected by conditions in the same way as breath sounds are. Therefore, as before, you should expect vesicular breathing over areas of normal tactile vocal fremitus, decreased breath sounds over areas of decreased tactile vocal fremitus, and bronchial breathing over areas of increased tactile vocal fremitus. Now, percuss the back of the chest on either side of the spine. Again, you are listening whether the percussion note is normal, dull or stony dull. Do not percuss near the midline as this produces a dull note from the solid structures of the thoracic spine and paravertebral musculature. Map out abnormal areas by percussing from resonant to dull. Remember the lungs extend down to the 10th rib posteriorly. Now use the bell of the stethoscope to listen in the same areas as you did for percussion, comparing right 
with left at each step. Now ask the patient to say 111 whilst you auscultate to assess the quality and amplitude of vocal resonance. Place the stethoscope in all the areas you have auscultated posteriorly and listen to whether vocal resonance is normal, decreased or increased. Whispering practiloquy is assessed on the posterior chest by asking the patient to whisper 111 and listen over the posterior chest wall as in normal auscultation. You have now completed your examination. It is very important at this stage to say to the patient, thank you, you may sit back now and to cover them up with a blanket. You should complete any examination of the respiratory system by turning to the examiner and saying, I would also like to examine for sacral and peripheral edema, examine the sputum, look at the temperature chart and perform a peak expiratory flow test. Here's a summary of what you'd expect to find clinically in some of the commoner respiratory problems.